Hey everybody, I'm Creed and this is Creed's Nightmare Creatures Episode 3. Today I want to show you guys some of my 90's horror art that I did after all my comic stuff. So this is pretty much a sequel to the video I did about my 90's comic book art. And I'll post a link below. So once I realized doing comics wasn't for me, I started just doing pieces of art and I decided to go a little darker. Uh, this was my transition from comics to monsters. Uh, it's the Reaper, who was a Batman villain. Uh, there's the cover of the comic, it was Detective 578 and Todd McFarlane did the art. And I decided to redraw it. I actually like my shape I gave him a little better than Todd McFarlane's, but I mean, that was a panel and mine is a whole piece, so it's a totally different thing. And then I left the victim pretty much the same because it wasn't really the focus of what I was doing, but I, t I did give him a, a different uh, face and I had some blood coming off his hands. And once I drew this, I, s I felt that it really needed something else. So actually I drew a separate piece of, I believe the reference was a metal skull, and I decided to just put that in the background. And that was just the old school transfer method with a pencil on the back of the paper. And I included the reference here because when I very first got on the internet and I posted my gallery up on my website, some guy thought he caught me. He's like, you just copied that from, and he named off the uh, the comic, and he named off the page number. I'm like, yeah, that's that's the reference I used. You're, you're right. You, it's no big achievement. I, I would have told you that. It's like reference is cheating somehow. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. Reference is how you draw things to make it look like a certain thing. <laughs> but this one, it's it's still my version. And if you look, his head's a little different. Uh, angle's a little different on the, on the sickle there. So I was really proud of myself. This was September 10th, 95. I was really, really proud of this one. This is when I really started to implement my use of heavy, heavy, heavy black in all my stuff. Mostly black if I could do it. So I really love that one and that, that got me going. Now all of these, that's, you'll have to pardon the photography here. Uh, there is some glare on them and it, they're a little distorted too because I had to take a photo. Uh, they're all oversized. They're all size and a half from what a comic is and they're on heavy illustration board. And all this was just on uh, crow quill and a bottle of ink. No brushes whatsoever were ever used in any of my art. And I am not a brush man. But yeah, this was my this was my physical inks when I used it. And you can you can kind of see the start of my style. It's not as smooth, and the I use a lot of thinner lines and stuff than I do now. But you can really see where I was starting to go with it. So that was September 10th, 95, and uh, here we go. There's September 14th, 95. I, I drew this. Now this is the start of my vampire series. And I, I was playing uh, Vampire the Masquerade a lot at the time. And that's where I get got the ideas for these pieces. Something would just come to me from the game or a character in the game. And I, I, I think a few of these, I remember the reference would have been one of those tiny thumbnails in a wizard. Because I used to flip through a wizard and you'd see all these comic covers that I didn't have. And they were only really small, but some of them, like, I remember at least two or three of these are from, like I said, reference from some comic out there somewhere that I saw in a little thumbnail in a wizard. So I basically just stole the layout because you couldn't get much detail from them. Uh, but this guy is, in the game, I don't want to get too much in the game, I don't really play it anymore, but it was a big influence on me at the time, and we had an awesome time playing it. The crew we had, it was just legendary. But this kind of vampire is more of a zombie kind of vampire, they're called a Samby in the game. So I decided I wanted to draw a really like gruesome zombie vampire, and that's it. And Lazar is my uh, family name for my characters. All my characters had the last name Lazar. I don't know why, it's just something I did. And the only thing I've done touched with any of these, I'm trying to brighten and contrast them. And then I swapped out my signature for the one I use now. So that was still September, and there's November 16th, 95, and I drew another Lazar coming out of his coffin with a upside down cross chain. There are problems with the guy's features uh, to me, but it works. But I like this one. It, it's more about the 
it's more of an action shot than I usually do. So I'll forgive a little bit of the where I don't like where the, some of the lines go. But I liked it enough to keep going. <laughs> and, uh, ah, this is one of my favorite pieces. I, I did this sort of as a, a splash page, so this is even bigger. This was one of my characters, and he was a vampire who hunted vampires. And uh, I had to come up with the armor because, uh, you know, you, you just walk around, you're easily identified. So, yeah, he had armor and stuff. Yeah, Skull Night Hunter. I don't remember where I referenced any of these. Um, I'm pretty sure the guy with the shotgun is from some shot of Johnny Blaze somewhere that I saw and went, hmm, I'm going to draw my guy something like that. But I really, I really love this one. And, and I, for years now, I have had an idea for something like this based on the Phantasm movie. And that's my, that's my artistic white whale. Someday I will get that done. So that was December 6, 95. And then we get into 96, and most of the rest of this series is done in 96. What surprised me is because of the, because of this series, I've always considered myself a horror artist. But when I look, and there's only 9 or 10 pieces, and now I do 9 or 10 pieces in a week or two, and I've done 100, or I've done way more than 100 cartoon pieces now, um, I'm not exactly the horror guy anymore. I'm pretty much the cartoon guy now, but... Yeah, for the longest time, I, I, this series was my anchor that I did. And I was always like, no, I'm the horror guy. But it's a very small series when I look back on it, it's strange. So here's January 23rd, 96. And one of my NPCs in one of my games was the first time I used the handle Creed Stonegate on somebody. So he was Creed. <laughs> and he'd come in and cause a pile of trouble for all the players and, you know, get the story going. And this is him either changing to or from a bag. And I believe I, I believe I referenced the suit just from the catalog. Just not that you can tell. I don't put in a ton of detail or anything. But now here's one of a, a werewolf and a vampire. And this was uh, February 1st, 96. You can really see I'm really embracing the just little bit of white to show what's going on. And I actually had somebody one time rip me on this one because they were like, they, and they named off all these things that wolves don't have that this thing has. I was like, it's not a wolf. It's a wolf monster. The monster part takes care of anything like, okay, wolves don't have that kind of eye and their snout's not like that or something like, he went on and on and on. And I was just like, yeah, but the monster part takes care of all of that. And I'm not, I wasn't trying to be, I wasn't trying to, I'm not trying to draw Lauren Green's new wilderness here. I'm trying to draw just some kind of menacing wolf monster. So to me, it looks perfect. And I'm pretty sure this was one of the ones that I saw. Like just, uh, I saw, it was a werewolf, and I, I don't know if it was a vampire in the in the thumbnail, but this was from a wizard. This one specifically, I remember. And I really like this one. It looks like the werewolf is going to win, but the vampire just is, you can see by his eye, he, he's got, he just kicked in one of his powers. He's about to shred that werewolf, uh, at least in my story anyway. And then uh, February 4th, 96, I drew this one, and... Uh, that's a Malkavian. They are crazy vampires. And their insanity, their clan symbol is a broken mirror to, to show insanity. So actually, I just drew this guy, just normally. And I looked at it, I was like, okay, it's it's really cool. It was kind of a theme in all these pieces. I'd, I'd draw them, and then I'd think of how to, they needed, most of them needed some kind of twist, some kind of enhancement. So I drew this guy, and it was cool. But I'm like, it really needs something. So then I drew it in a smashed mirror. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the, that's what it needed right there. He is insane. <laughs> now, this one is based on a power that you can get in the game. And some of the really nasty villains can get it. And it's called, it's called Horrid Form. So, yeah, this one's called Horrid Form. Uh, let me read you straight from the book. Now, this is all version one, and I actually still have the books. Okay, it lets you assume the form of a monster. Uh, the vampire's entire body transforms into a seven to eight foot tall creature with grotesque features. The vampire has claw-like seven fingered hands, a row of bony spines protruding from the vertebrae, a horribly deformed head, huge muscles, and thick blackish gray skin covered with a slick black oily residue. So that's all I had to go on and I this is what I drew. And I think it, I think it captures it pretty well. Now the next one's another vampire power, how they uh, influence or mesmerize. As I, I, I call this piece Mesmer. And this was uh, February 20th, 96. And this was another one. I, I drew him, and he's, he looks like he's gazing in your eyes. And then I drew the hand, so he's like 
He's using his power, but then when I come up with the lines, that made the whole piece. Yeah, this is this is a little offbeat, but this is from our campaign. Our DM Ulrich used to have a, a character he used, who was a a werewolf, but uh, he was kind of nuts, and he put on a costume and called himself the lunatic, and he, everything was moon based. And this is based on, I based this on a on a on a sketch of his he did, and I think it came out pretty good. So that's that's the lunatic. That's from our that's from our campaign that we used to run. And then in the game, one of the other types of vampires is Nosferatu, and they're all ugly and horrible, and they they hide in the sewer. Uh, so there's an ugly, horrible vampire standing in the sewer, hugging a rat. And when I thought of the idea of seeing it through a, through a sewer grate, that that did it right there. If you'll notice, what I love about these pieces is it gets the whole thing across. But there's very little white. There's tiny little bits of white line here and there, but it's mostly just a black thing you're looking at. I really, I really fell in love with this whole technique during this inking phase. And surprisingly enough, like I said, I do not use a brush, so it was all just pen and ink. That was February 29th, 96. February 96 was a good, a good art month for me. I gotta say. Now, May 18th, 96, I drew this guy. Now he was one of my NPCs. And these these guys, it's a it's a made up clan that's sort of half vampire, half fairy. And uh, let me see if I can find the. Now here's the description of these guys from the book. Gaunt, even by vampire standards. Skin with a translucent whiteness. Eyes with an odd shape and solid black without pupils. When they're changed, they grow more than a foot, and their fingers grow longer. Their ears and nose and cheekbones become much more angular and defined. And that's the description in the book. Um, now, in my campaign, that's why now this is Van R is what I named it, Van R Frost. And in my campaign, there's another thing, and it mentions about these guys that they you they can use technology that shouldn't work, like Rube Goldberg kind of technology that they can use and nobody else can. So Van R had that ability, and uh, he's actually connected to another dimension on there, and he's that's the that's the computer computer system that ran that dimension that's on his uh, on his uh, read out there and I actually went really way overboard on how elaborate that little machine he's using is and the, the thing on his arm and then the the distracting gothic wallpaper and then I reused a shot from my uh, skull night hunter I used that really angry blood spitting vampire picture and I really like how this came out it's it's strange it's bizarre He's a he's a weird looking dude. He's doing strange things. His hands look completely wrong, but that's what it said in the thing is they're all stretched out. So I think he looks exactly like he should look. And I really love this piece. It's, it's cool. So that was May 18th, 96. And that's actually the end of, of, of what turned what in retrospect is a very short series, but I somehow I, I always thought it seemed like more to me for a while there. Um, so that's the end of my uh, vampire series, except the next thing I drew was three years later. Uh, so those three years, uh, that's, that's a whole other thing. But uh, I did not draw a thing for three years. And then I wanted to I wanted to do a piece. I had one piece of illustration board left that was just waiting for something. And so I finally, when I, when I got back to it, I sat down and I, I, I didn't know for sure if I could even draw anymore. I mean, three years is a long time. Uh, so basically I just wanted to draw a piece to see if I could draw and I that was my last one of my vampire series and that was August 6 99 I did a creepy creepy priest with white eyes killing the vampire <laughs> and uh, I happily found out that yep I could still draw so that was cool and then I didn't really draw a lot after that and I'll, I'll pick up when I did in the I'm gonna do a recap series of more of my art leading up to modern day so i hope you find this uh interesting <laughs> i still actually like all this art it's it's when i actually this is the actual point where i became happy with how i could draw and i i i wish that i did 40 or 50 of these during the time but that's not how my life was going at the time and uh so this was a this was kind of a small series when I look back on it, but it, it was a big thing in my life was this was my anchor of this is what my art is. And uh, it's, it's kind of not anymore, but you can see the influences that I take with me. So I hope you found this interesting, and uh, I've got more coming. <laughs> Boy, do I ever. 
uh, but especially more recap stuff. Um, I want to start getting into when I basically it goes until I start DeviantArt, which I think is uh, I'm not even gonna guess the date right now, but uh, it's starting with my DeviantArt stuff. Uh, so I got a video coming, like I said, I'm gonna pick up from where I leave off here and recap some more of my art. So until then, take her easy. Hey, thanks for watching all the way through. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like or want to subscribe. <laughs> and any links to my art or any cool things I mentioned are in the description. Thanks.